Hello and welcome to Terrifying Tuesday. Today's story is House Rules. I've just been up all night, wide-eyed and awake in a motel room, trying to decide what the fuck to do. I called friends, family, nobody believes what happened. But someone suggested that it would make a great story here, so let me relate it to you in the hopes that some of you will believe me. I'm a web developer and sci-fi fantasy writer, and rarely have I ever had a reason to write non-fiction. The exact nature of the genre in which I write rarely has any basis in the real world. When something truly unexplainable happens, I view it with the eyes of a skeptic, but one who is open-minded to any possibility, once proven. I won't waste your time on unnecessary details, reader. Please understand that I'm extremely desperate and seeking comfort if not advice. I'm already doubting my sanity enough. I recently moved into a new apartment with two roommates, Pete and Rob. All three of us are in our late 20s or early 30s. We live mostly quiet nights, but we've already been out for a few drinks at the bar around the corner from the apartment. I moved in at the beginning of May, and couldn't have been happier since then. My roommates are very cleanly. They stay well stocked on cleaning supplies, always keep an empty sink. We take cleaning and scrubbing duties in all of the common areas in our own rooms once a month. House rules were generally reasonable, don't make a mess. Don't play loud music. Don't take showers late at night while people try to sleep. It wasn't too surprising when one of the house rules included not leaving any items on the counters or shower in the bathroom. Each of us have a cabinet where we can store our toiletries, with a small lock on it. I didn't think too much of the lock, because I assumed that it was so that people wouldn't use each other's toiletries. I was actually somewhat touched by the extra attention to protecting each other's belongings. I had no trouble abiding by the house rules until last night. I had just worked a very long shift at the company for whom I develop. We'd been in crunch time for a major project at work, and we finally deployed our code in the late afternoon when something blew up and we had to patch it on the spot. Finally, at midnight, we slinked home to collapse and enjoy our weekend. Fortunately, I found that both of my roommates weren't home. They must have been out at a party or something, so I decided that there should be no harm in cleaning up in spite of how late it was. <laughs> Feeling exhausted, I brushed my teeth. I used toothpaste for sensitive gums. It's pink. Washed up at the sink and climbed into the shower to wash off the day and ease the tension in my shoulders. I stood under the water, letting it hit my head and flow down over me, and closed my eyes for a few minutes, just allowing my mind to go silent for a bit. When I opened them, I didn't notice at first, but slowly I became aware of something in my peripheral vision. Through the, flo through the frosted glass of the shower stall, a short and round shape stood in the doorway. A shape like a person. Instantly, my blood went cold. The shape couldn't have been my roommate's. It was far too short, about the height of a, a child or a dwarf. I immediately felt how vulnerable and exposed I was, standing naked in the shower with nothing to defend myself but bottles of shampoo and body soap. I hoped that maybe I'd left the door unlocked by mistake and one of the neighbor's children had wandered in. Hello? I called and shut off the shower. I heard soft smacking sounds like wet chewing and the shape shifted a bit, turning toward the sink could only have been a few feet away from me, separated only by the glass shower divider. I was suddenly shivering, even though the air conditioner doesn't cool the bathroom and it's usually a sauna. The person must know I was here. My imagination began making up reasons why it didn't respond to my call. A, a deaf person, maybe? I decided to take my chances and open the shower door an inch or two so I could peek out. I should have just waited for it to leave. When I opened the door, I was met with the sight of a short, round person... It was grotesquely fat to the point of roundness, like one of those Oompa Loompas from Willy Wonka. His skin was a sickly, pasty, white shot through with black veins, and it had a sheen to it as if it were caked in old soap and moistened under a light rain. It had stringy hair on its head and no clothing. It couldn't possibly have been human, but my uncomprehending brain insisted that it must be some sickly person who had wandered in here. The thing was standing at my sink, and I realized that the munching sounds I had heard were its eating. It had the last bits of my bar of hand soap gripped greedily between two hands, long brown nails digging ruts into it, and, and it woofed it down like it was starving, licking up the little soap bubbles that escaped from its mouth before it moved onto my toothpaste. It first squeezed the toothpaste out and ate it, and then it started eating the tube itself, chomping on it with fang-like teeth and tearing it apart. I watched in horror as it picked up my toothbrush and, 
in a sick pantomime of my behavior of a few minutes ago, ran the bristles over its blackened fangs, then giggled, high and screeching, its entire body jiggling as it laughed, before it popped the toothbrush into its mouth and swallowed it whole. It must, I must have made some sound, a whine of terror, because it looked up suddenly and locked eyes with me, its face twisted an expression of utter hate, utter hatred. It hissed angrily, and I thought for sure that it was going to eat me next. Suddenly, the front door to the apartment slammed, and Rob called out, I'm home! Thing's head snapped around, wearing an expression of comic childish fright. <laughs> it scampered to a small privacy window set in the bathroom wall, already hanging open to its, its entry point, and jumped up with surprising agility, gripping the sill and pulling itself through the, into the darkness of the alley behind the building. <sighs> Filled with revulsion and horror, I jumped out of the shower and slammed the window shut, driving the bolt home, knowing that we always kept the window locked anyway, then threw on a towel and went to tell Rob what just happened. A few minutes later, Pete got home and I explained everything to both of them. They looked completely disbelieving. And when I challenged the house rules about late showers and keeping everything spotless, about the locks on the cabinets, they could only shake their heads and explain that it was strictly for sanitary reasons. They suggested that maybe I was just stressed, and I ought to check outside to see if I had some kind of episode and threw my toiletries out the window. But I wasn't going out where that thing was. Now, the reason why I'm here in a motel room, alone, instead of with my roommates... As I turned away to return to the bathroom and check to see if I had hallucinated the whole thing, I saw Pete's hand go to his mouth and wipe away a small smear of pink toothpaste. Thank you for watching. Please check out my other videos. They're, 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 they're also things.